Hi there, my name is Brianna Scott, and this is a study done at Duke Children's Hospital in Durham, North Carolina. Our team looked at the use of high-frequency jet ventilation in children with congenital heart disease, and I'd like to share with you some of the results of our work. I have no current conflicts of interest. High-frequency jet ventilation is primarily used in neonates, but may also have a role in the treatment of older children with respiratory failure. Complex cardiopulmonary interactions exist in children with congenital heart disease, especially among those with severe lung disease. Alternative ventilation techniques may be needed to support gas exchange in instances when conventional mechanical ventilation is unable to do so without noxious settings. Our team hypothesized high-frequency jet ventilation would improve gas exchange in patients who failed conventional mechanical ventilation as measured by a decrease in PaCO2. This study was retrospective, and we included all pediatric patients with complex congenital heart disease who received high-frequency jet ventilation in the pediatric cardiac ICU between July of 2014 through December of 2018. Patients in whom high-frequency jet ventilation was started while on ECMO were excluded. We extracted data on demographics, pulmonary mechanics, ventilator settings, arterial blood gases, need for ECMO, need for inhaled nitric oxide, and survival. At our institution, high-frequency jet ventilation is largely managed by a respiratory therapist-driven protocol, which targets a mean airway pressure that is titrated to optimal lung inflation and oxygenation. The rate is adjusted to minimize air trapping with a backup ventilator rate of 3 to 5 breaths per minute, and the goal pH is 735 to 745. Data were analyzed with paired non-parametric testing for change in blood gas values from pre-high-frequency jet ventilation and four to six hours post-high-frequency jet ventilation initiation. We included 27 patients with median age and weight of two and a half months and 4.4 kilograms respectively. 82% had cyanotic heart disease and slightly over half were within 28 days of surgery. 63% of patients were receiving conventional mechanical ventilation for respiratory failure, 11% had undergone prior surgery, and 56% had no documented infection. This table shows the results when we compared patients prior to high-frequency jet ventilation with 4 to 6 hours post-initiation. Initial conventional ventilator settings were a rate of 30, a peak inspiratory pressure of 30, and a PEEP of 8 with a mean airway pressure of 15. Jet ventilator settings were a rate of 360, peak inspiratory pressure of 45, an eye time of 0.02 seconds, and a mean airway pressure of 14. Compared to conventional mechanical ventilation, at 4 to 6 hours post high frequency jet ventilation, there were significant differences in median pH and PaCO2, but no differences in PaO2, base deficit, bicarbonate, or lactate. When we examine outcomes, median time spent receiving any mechanical ventilation was a total of 15 days. Patients received conventional mechanical ventilation prior to high-frequency jet ventilation for approximately 8.5 days, and most patients spent 1.2 days receiving jet ventilation. 13 patients survived, 6 required ECMO, and non-survivors were significantly more likely to have required ECMO. In conclusion, high-frequency jet ventilation is a feasible modality in children with congenital heart disease and severe respiratory failure who failed conventional mechanical ventilation and results in improved ventilation as evidenced by a reduction in PaCO2, although mortality was still high at 52%.